one in two people with multiple sclerosis will develop a major depression over the course of their lifetime. And depression is probably the single biggest factor that affects quality of life. So the impact of the Alliance has really, I think, been transformative. Just speaking personally, I think it's put in tremendous energy um, and hopefully some finances into funding good rehabilitation research. So what, what the Alliance has done is enabled people to get together and form networks. It's brought people together across disciplines. So you know, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm now talking to neuropsychologists, we're talking to brain images, uh, uh, brain imaging people, to physiatrists, uh, rehabilitation specialists, people who do neuromodulation. We're all coming together, and this has been facilitated by the Progressive MS Alliance, and we all have the same goal, which is to come up with a coordinated treatment response for people with Progressive MS. Speaking as a psychiatrist, I actually think there's a psychological barrier here. When you look at the published literature on treatment studies, on symptom management, um, it's predominantly geared towards people with relapsing and remitting MS because researchers are looking for the positive result. It's really quite striking. Um, people with progressive MS have been left behind a little. I think people with progressive MS need to know that there are now researchers worldwide who are targeting their kind of MS. Um, we're getting together like never before to try and uh, make progress with this, this disease. When you look at the symptom management studies, they're largely geared towards people with relapsing remitting MS. So we now need to have a concerted effort to try and bring about some symptom improvement in people with progressive MS. And I do think that by combining different kinds of interventions, you boost the chances of success. So we've got the ability to do it now. You know, the Alliance has brought us together so the work that we are doing now focuses on symptom management in people with progressive MS. Um, my area is cognitive rehabilitation. So I'm working with neuropsychologists. I'm a neuropsychiatrist. How can we refine our tools to provide um, good treatment for cognition? This is a big, this is a big issue. And up to 70% of people with secondary progressive MS have cognitive difficulties. Up to 50% of people with primary progressive MS have the same problems. So cognitive rehab offers a chance of helping them. You know, because I'm a clinician and I have a lot of patients with progressive MS, I'm aware of their sense of despondency at times. They're the, the feeling that they've been left by the wayside as you know, therapies have moved on. So what I'd like to say to them is now there's a concerted effort um, to try and change this, to try and bring about symptom relief. You know, one of the, I think, exciting parts about my work is that there's a, there's a potentially quick translational aspect. By that I mean, you know, what we do now might have some therapeutic benefits fairly quickly. A lot of MS researchers, you know, we do this complex molecular work that, you know, perhaps 10 years, 15 years down the road might have some therapeutic benefits. But clinical trials for symptom management suggest that if these treatments are effective, in a couple of years' time, we may have for the first time some treatments that we know can help cognition in MS, or might help ambulation, or might help mood. So there's a fairly quick translational benefit to this work as well, which I think is exciting. Mm -hmm.